it is reported that Nietzsche did read some of Dostoevsky's books. What is believed to be of certainty is that he read Crime and Punishment and Notes from Underground in the later periods of his life. If this being of knowledge, is it possible that we can associate the philosophical works of Dostoevsky and Nietzsche together? That they both write about very similar psychological ideas and concepts? Well, yes. And this can be done by comparing Nietzschean concepts of ressentiment from the genealogy of morality and the primary recluse individual within Dostoevsky's book being the underground man. So, hi, my name is Spencer and welcome back to Thoughts on Thinking. So let's outline Nietzsche's core concept of ressentiment from his book The Genealogy of Morality and then we can make the associations from there. So resentment is a feeling and emotional response of spite which acts as a cause of frustration for someone. It may be out of jealousy or a feeling which culminates out of an inferiority complex so that the individual can feel superior about themselves when compared to others. This is no different from the ego being hurt. It creates this fake inferiority which it can condone as pathetic, minimal and weak. When really, instead of internalising and acknowledging such personal discrepancies, the ego projects it onto someone else by seeing it through their actions and personality, a scapegoat, if you will, that can be blamed, not themselves, because a resentful, spiteful person does not want to hurt their ego, but only protect it from reality. So what does Nietzsche, when trying to understand the morality of the herd in relation to ressentiment, say? He writes in the Genealogy of Morality the following. The beginning of the slave's revolt in morality occurs when ressentiment itself turns creative and gives birth to values. The ressentiment of those being who denied the proper response of action compensate it only with imaginary revenge. Whereas all noble morality grows out of a triumphant saying yes to itself, slave morality says no on principle to everything that is outside other non-self, and this no is its creative deed. This reversal of the evaluating glance, this essential orientation to the outside instead of back onto itself, is a feature of ressentiment. In order to come out, slave morality first has to have an opposing external world. It needs physiologically speaking, external stimuli in order to act at all. Its actions is basically a reaction, end quote. What Nietzsche is saying here is that resentment is a form of imaginary revenge for the slave. Why? Because resentment, as I have said, is only carried out by creating an imaginary enemy. External from the personal ego itself, away from that which needs to be evaluated and rectified properly. Because as Nietzsche says, all noble, true morality grows out from a triumphant yes to itself. A yes that I say and you say, whereby I say yes to analysing myself, my actions and deficiencies. Not to create an imaginary revenge or an imaginary enemy, but to revenge oneself by correcting myself internally and externally. Very much the reason why Peterson, for example, is so popular for one of his many motivational quotes where he says, let your deficiencies burn off like dead wood. Nietzsche gives a theoretical example of resentment in a predator versus prey format in The Genealogy of Morality. He brings up the problem of what is to be seen as morally good in the eyes of the slave. He writes the following, I quote, the problem with the other origin of the good of the good man, as the person of ressentiment, has thought it out for himself, demands some conclusion. It is not surprising that lamb should bear a grudge against the great birds of prey, but that is no reason for blaming the great birds of prey for taking the little lambs. And when the lambs say among themselves, these birds of prey are evil, and he who least resembles a bird of prey, who is rather its opposite, a lamb, should he not be good? then there is nothing to carp within this ideal establishment. Though the bird of prey may regard it a little mockingly, and maybe say to themselves, we bear no grudge against them, these good lambs, we even love them, nothing is tastier than a tender lamb. It is just as absurd to ask strength not to express itself as strength, 
not to be a desire to overthrow, crush, become master, to be a thirst for enemies, resistance and triumphs, as it is to ask weakness to express itself as strength." End quote. So here I see him referring to action. Again, to be true, to say yes to oneself is for the lambs to maybe try and rectify the problem, but instead they use the actions of the birds of prey, in this example, as an excuse to grant them as evil and immoral, and that anything that doesn't resemble the actions of the lamb is good. Like a lamb, the resentment in this example is in the fact that the lambs don't take action to take care of their own, because they know that they are themselves inferior. But what is done is that they use the fact of the matter and the resentment that they hold towards the great birds of prey to perpetuate their view of morality their morality of inferiority, of what is good and bad. Thus, what is morally good for the lambs is kindness, empathy, generosity, and being humble, which opposes the morality of what is good for the birds of prey. Therefore, the slave morality of the lamb is wrong because, as Nietzsche says, I quote, to ask strength not to express itself as strength, end quote. It makes no sense. Let's all act weak for the sake of the other who also is and wants to be weak and see how far we get. This brings about creative ressentiment. Now, how does this relate to Dostoevsky, the underground man in particular? Well, it is very obvious from the get-go. To be precise, that in the first paragraph of Notes from Underground, the underground man is Nietzsche's man of resentment. As I quote from Notes from Underground, the first paragraph, I am a sick man, I'm a spiteful man, I'm an unattractive man, I think there's something wrong with my liver, but I understand damn all about my illness and I can't say for certain which part of me is affected. I'm not receiving treatment for it and never have, although I do respect medicine and doctors. What more, I'm extremely superstitious. Well, sufficiently to respect medicine. Oh no, I'm refusing treatment out of spite. That's something you probably can't bring yourselves to understand. So straight from the first lines of the book, we can see he calls himself a man of spite, how he doesn't want to find or search for any treatment to improve his life. He says he has respect for doctors and medicine, but then contradicts himself by saying he is suspicious to ever respect medicine and that he refuses medicine out of spite. This is all because he himself is resentful in the fact that the medicine heals, but he cannot in the slightest heal himself of his own pathological nihilism, his slave morality. Then what really makes this all the more obvious is how he says, I quote, that's something you probably can't bring yourselves to understand, end quote. We as readers can't understand his bitterness, his spite and resentment to the world. Why? Simply because he is living in a world where he is against all others. This relates to Nietzsche's concept of ressentiment because the underground man replaces true action with imaginary revenge, as Nietzsche calls it. Revenge against all others in the world. The underground man only performs action which blames others, condones them. Everyone is an imaginary enemy because of his resentment for them. Everyone is insignificant in being able to understand the underground man's self-made turmoil. This is further explained in the underground man's conception of being more intelligent than everybody else. He thinks he is more intelligent than everyone else because he participates in what he calls conscious inertia, but at the same time he paradoxically refers to himself as a mouse, an insect. This is because he knows he is insignificant, which is the result of being more superior than everyone else, because he views that doing anything is pointless. His belief in being beyond everyone else automatically puts him in the underground away from any kind of social discourse or interaction. He's constantly faced by contradiction everywhere the underground man goes, fueled by his resentment and continuous spite towards the world. I quote, The hapless mouse has this time managed to accumulate so much additional nastiness in the form of questions and doubts. Is piled up so many other unresolved questions in addition to the original problem that has involuntarily surrounded itself with a lethal brew, a stinking bog consisting of doubts and emotions, and finally of the spittle showered on it 
by all the spontaneous men of action, solemnly gathered around in the guise of judges and dictators who are laughing their heads off at him. All that remains of him to do is wave his little paw dismissively and creep ignominiously back into his little hole with a smile of simulated contempt in which he doesn't even believe himself. End quote. Nietzsche writes, I quote, The well-born felt they were the happy. They did not need, first of all, to construct their happiness artificially by looking at their enemies, or in some cases by talking themselves into it, lying themselves into it, and also, as complete men bursting with strength and therefore necessarily active, they knew they must not separate happiness from action. Being active is by necessity counted as part of happiness, all very much the opposite of happiness at the level of the powerless, the oppressed, and those rackled with poisonous and hostile feelings, for whom it manifests itself as essentially a narcotic, an anaesthetic, rest, peace, sabbath relaxation of the mind and stretching of the limbs, in short, as something passive. While the nobleman is confident and frank with himself, the man of ressentiment is neither upright nor naive, nor honest and straight with himself. His soul squints, his mind loves dark corners, secret paths, and back doors. Everything secretive appeals to him as being his world, his security, his comfort, he knows all about keeping quiet, not forgetting, waiting, temporarily humble, and abasing himself. Now what Nietzsche says here about the resentment man is identical to the underground man, illustrated by Dostoevsky. The fact that I quote the underground man only concludes his life with soap bubbles and inertia, shows how passive this man is, sitting in his bath stretching out his limbs, as Nietzsche says how he finds his happiness in the opposite of how the noble man finds his happiness through action, drenching himself into mere nothingness. Again, with relation to happiness, the underground man truly makes his happiness by looking at his enemies, or what he calls men of action, as stupid. This gives him happiness, ridiculing the active individual, the noble man, or that which Nietzsche regards as those who hold master morality. Now with this short overview from some sections from Notes from Underground and Nietzsche's Genealogy of Morality, we can see how Dostoevsky writes wonderfully the dreaded world which an underground man or of slave morality and resentment lives in, while Nietzsche very much provides the thorough analysis of what the psychological blueprint is for an individual who lives in such a condition. I personally just started reading Notes from Underground a week ago, and it's probably one of my favourite books. I mean, Dostoevsky, I think, writes beautifully even when describing the most negative conditions of consciousness. The way he uses words and the methods in which he uses to put them across in philosophical topics such as justice, egoism, action, free will, rationality, and all sorts of other perspectives and concepts. It's all done wonderfully. So if you haven't read it, I really recommend you pick it up. So I will probably do some more videos on this book. I could make 10 minute videos really on every single paragraph from this book to show how dense and deep it goes. So yeah, expect some more videos surrounding different concepts from this book in relation to Nietzsche or other philosophers. But anyways, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Links to my social medias such as Instagram, Twitter and Patreon will be in the comments and description below.